Hello everybody and welcome back to the Perio Hub. So today we're going to discuss the last and the final part of cementum where we'll be essentially discussing its functions. We'll be discussing the junction that cementum tissue shares with enamel and dentine. And ultimately, we'll be discussing the clinical features of cementum. So without wasting much time, let's start off with the first video of 2020. So in the last video, we discussed about the various types of cementum and we saw its unique features. So let's see how each type of cementum facilitates different functions. So the first function we'll be talking about is the function of tooth support and anchorage. So the cementum tissue along with the periodontal ligament helps facilitate the attachment of the tooth to the alveolar bone and the most suitable type of cementum which facilitates this particular function of tooth support is the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum. So the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum is usually seen in the middle aspect of the root and because of the presence of the extrinsic fibers which are nothing but the sharpie fibers it helps in the attachment of the tooth to the periodontal ligament and the alveolar bone we have spoken about the sharpie fibers in the video where we discussed about the periodontal ligament fibers so these fibers belong to the extrinsic group of the cementum and helps basically in the attachment of the cementum to the alveolar bone so the next function of cementum is the function of adaptation and reshaping of the root surface during tooth movement now tooth movement can occur due to orthodontic forces so this is basically a induced type of tooth movement wherein we intentionally move the teeth from one position to another with the help of orthodontic braces the second type of tooth movement is something uh, which is not induced. It occurs naturally due to certain changes in local environment. Uh, for example, if we extract this lower first molar, uh, then the second molar will eventually move in a mesial direction and try and occupy this space and even the upper molar will supra erupt into this space. So this is a type of pathologic migration or the movement of the teeth within the oral cavity which mainly occurs due to change in the local environment. Now with any type of tooth movement there are three basic tissues which get altered. So firstly it is the alveolar bone uh, wherein there are areas of resorption and formation which occurs. Then we have the periodontal ligament space uh, wherein there is uh, areas of tension and pressure which occurs and ultimately it is the cemental tissue where changes occur. So in case of the cementum due to tooth movement there is formation of resorption lacunae and these resorption lacunae are further repaired with the help of the formation of reparative cementum. Now which type of cementum is reparative cementum? It is basically the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum which is a type of reparative cementum which is formed which helps to fill these resorption lacunae. So these are the two important functions of cementum. First being uh, to facilitate tooth support and the second is reshaping and readapting due to tooth movement. So next we'll talk about the junctions that cementum shares uh, with two tissues. So firstly we'll be talking about the junction with enamel. So this right here is the enamel surface and second is the junction that it shares with dentine. So the junction of enamel and cementum is called as the cemento enamel junction and the junction which it shares with dentine is called as the cemento dentinal junction or the dentino cemental junction. So first let's talk about the cemento enamel junction. So cemento enamel junction as defined by the glossary of periodontal terms is defined as the area of union of cementum and enamel at the cervical region of the tooth. So cervical region is this particular area wherein the enamel and the cementum meets. Now cemento enamel junction is a very important reference point in clinical dentistry as it marks the finishing of the crown area and the beginning of the root area. So uh, this reference point has to be kept in mind while planning a lot of aesthetic procedures while preparing uh, uh, crowns etc. So this is a very important reference point that needs to be considered. Now there are three possible relationships that can occur between the cementum and enamel. So the first type of possibility is a overlapping junction. 
So in 60 to 65 percent of the cases we have a overlapping junction where the cementum overlaps the enamel. So if we see a zoomed in picture of this we can see how the cementum right here is overlapping a layer of uh, enamel and in this particular scanning electron microscopic uh, view we can clearly see how cementum is overlapping the enamel. So this is the first uh, relationship that can occur. Now in the second pattern which can occur in 25 to 30 percent of situation is a touching or edge to edge junction wherein the enamel and the cementum will meet at the butt joint. That means there is no space between the enamel and cementum. They will just meet each other at a certain point. The third type of pattern which is observed is also called as the gap junction and this occurs in 10% of the cases. And in this particular case, the enamel and cementum fail to meet each other. So there is a gap between the enamel and cementum which is formed uh, and the dentine here is exposed. So if we observe, we can uh, actually say that in maximum percent of the cases, it is the overlapping relationship which is present. So if we think why exactly do we have maximum cases with cementum overlapping the enamel? So I'll give you two minutes. You can pause this video and just think over it and I'll be back. So basically what happens is during the tooth development as we have seen before the after the enamel formation there is formation of a layer of reduced enamel epithelium and right at the cervical area of the reduced enamel epithelium there is formation of the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath which further disintegrates and causes the formation of the cementum. So first the enamel is formed after which the cementum formation occurs. So because of this, the cementum in most of the cases will overlap a layer of enamel. So the data of these possible relationships was found out through light microscopic studies which were done by Thorson in the year 1917. Now with regards to these relationships, there is a fourth type of pattern which is also observed wherein the enamel is overlapping the cementum. So in studies which were done by Kepi et al, he found that in primary dentition and in approximately 1.6% conditions, it is the enamel which overlaps the cementum. Now this is a controversial topic of discussion because we know that embryonically this particular condition cannot occur. Enamel cannot overlap cementum but in certain conditions this can occur and we'll be talking about these uh, conditions in the later half of this video. Now talking about the second type of junction which is the cemento-dentinal junction or the dentino-cemental junction. Now according to the glossary of periodontal terms the cemento-dentinal junction is the area of union of dentine and cementum. So if we have a layer of radicular dentine right here then the union between the radicular dentine and the cementum is called as the cemento-dentinal junction. So the important uh, feature of the cemento-dentinal junction occurs in the apical area. So if we zoom in this apical portion, we can observe that the cemento-dentinal junction is a junction where the pulpal tissue ends and the periodontal tissue begins. So if this is the radicular dentine and this is the cementum, this is the junction right here where the pulpal tissue is ending and the PDL is beginning. So this is the important feature of the cemento-dentinal junction. The second important feature is the presence of the intermediate layer or a layer of Hopewell-Smith. So this particular layer of intermediate cementum is present between the radicular dentine and cementum. It does not have features of either dentine or cementum. And we have spoken about this in the previous broadcast, so you can go back and refer to that. So the third topic of discussion today is the clinical features of cementum. And, and here, firstly, we'll be talking about a condition called as hypercementosis. Now, hypercementosis is otherwise also called as cemental hyperplasia. And it is nothing but a prominent thickening of cementum. So as you can see, it can be either a nodular enlargement of cementum or it can be a spike-like projection of cementum. And these can also be called as the cemental spike. Now hypercementosis can occur in two conditions. It can either be localized or it can be generalized. Now the etiology of hypercementosis is somewhat unknown uh, but it is believed to be caused due to excessive forces 
uh, orthodontic forces which can be applied on to the tooth or it can be caused due to chronic pulpal or periodontal infections. Now generalized type of hypercementosis is seen in certain conditions such as Paget's disease. The second type of anomaly we see with cementum is the formation of something called as the enamel projections. So enamel projections are most commonly seen in the furcation areas of mandibular teeth and it occurs usually when amelogenesis does not cease uh, before root formation. So in most conditions the enamel formation or amelogenesis finishes after which the root formation begins. Uh, now if this does not occur due to some reason there is formation of abnormal projections of enamel and these are called as enamel projections. In similar lines we have another anomaly uh, which is called as the enamel pearls. So these are basically globule like structures of enamel which are seen in the cervical regions of the tooth root. Next we are going to talk about something called as the cementicle. So these are globular masses of cementum uh, which may be found lying in the periodontal ligament space in the cementum or attached to the root surface. Now based upon the location of cementicles it can be classified into three variants. So firstly we have a type which is called as the free cementicles. So these are cementicles which are present in the periodontal tissue. Second type is called as the attached cementicles. So these are basically attached to the tooth root or to the cementum surface. And ultimately the third variant are the embedded cementicles which are completely embedded into the cementum. Now cementicles occur due to the calcification of the epithelial cell rests of malasis. So lastly we'll be talking about a condition termed as ankylosis. So ankylosis is nothing but the fusion of the cementum to the alveolar bone wherein there is obliteration of the periodontal ligament space. So it mainly occurs in the primary dentition but in certain cases it can also occur in case of the permanent dentition. Now ankylosis represents a form of abnormal cementum repair and this reparative cementum which is formed obliterates the periodontal ligament space itself and fuses directly to the alveolar bone. So there is no periodontal ligament in case of ankylosis, ankylosed teeth. There is only cementum which is directly fused to the alveolar bone. So to quickly recapitulate what we saw in this present video, we started off by discussing the functions of cementum. We discussed two basic functions of cementum. First being the function of tooth anchorage or tooth support and second the function of Next we discussed the junctions. Firstly we spoke about the cemento enamel junction and the three basic variants and nextly we discussed about the cemento dentinal junction. Ultimately we spoke about the clinical aspects wherein we discussed about hypercementosis. We discussed about the enamel pearls and enamel projections, cementicles and ultimately we discussed ankylosis. So I hope this part 3 video was helpful and useful and if it was, do give this video a like and share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel. I wish you all a very happy new year once again and I'll be meeting you soon with my next video and until we meet next, take good care of yourself. This is Perio Hub signing off.